ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀ ಮೈ ಭಗವತಾಂ ಕ್ಯಾಂಥೋ ಒನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟೆನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಥರ್ಟೀನ್ ಯಾ Yeah, it's the next verse. Yeah. Sarvete nimishai rakshai. Oh, it's, the, it's, the, it's text 13. See, 11 and 12 was together. And then text 13. That was the verse that uh, I was told to elaborate on. ಸಾರ್ವತೆ ನಿಮಿಷೈರಕ್ಷೈಸ್ ತಮನುದ್ರುತಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಾರ ವಿಚಲು ಸ್ತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಗೌರಿ ಜಂತುಮನ್ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ತತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ಸ್ತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಸಾರ್ವತೆ ನಿಮಿಷ ರಕ್ಷೈ ತಾಮನುದ್ರುತ ಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ಸತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಸಾರ್ವತೆ ನಿಮಿಷೈರಾಕ್ಷೈ ತಮನುದ್ರುತ ಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ಸತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಸಮಾನುದ್ರುತ ಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ಸತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಸಾರ್ವತೆ ನಿಮಿಷೈರಾಕ್ಷೈ ಸಮಾನುದ್ರುತ ಚೇತಸ ವೀಕ್ಷಂತ ಸ್ನೇಹ ಸಂಬಧ ವಿಚಲು ತತ್ರ ತತ್ರ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ ದರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವರ್ ಮೆಲ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಪಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಟ್ರಾಕ್ಷನ್ ದೇ ಲುಕ್ ಎಟ್ ಹಿಮ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಬ್ಲಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ದರ್ ಆಯ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೇ ಮೂವ್ ಹಿದರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಥಿದರ್ ಇನ್ ಪರ್ಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಸಿಟಿ ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಸ್ ದಿವೈನ್ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಎ ಸಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ Krishna is naturally attractive for all living beings because he is the chief eternal amongst all eternals. He alone is the maintainer of the many eternals. This is stated in the Kata Upanishad and thus one can obtain permanent peace and prosperity by revival of one's eternal relation with him, now forgotten under the spell of Maya. the illusory energy of the lord once this relation is slightly revived the conditioned soul at once becomes freed from the illusion of material energy and becomes mad after the association of the lord this association is made possible not only by personal contact with the lord 
but also by association with his name, fame, form, and quality. Srimad Bhagavatam trains the conditioned soul to this stage of perfection by submissive hearing from the pure devotee. Srila Prabhupada Ki Om Ajnana Timirandascha Inanjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nitinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shunyavadi Paschatyadesh Tarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Uh, having Krishna in the center. And Krishna is actually present in Hastinapur during this transitional period of Yudhishthira taking the throne. And uh, Krishna spent a few months there in Hastinapur, but now it's time for him to go back to Dwarka. And this verse... It is explaining some of the symptoms and reactions of the inhabitants of Hastinapur, what they're experiencing, what they're going through uh, with Krishna's departure, going to Dwarka. They're so fortunate uh, to be able to associate directly with Krishna. And uh, they have this special mercy And we can see here that the reaction that they're having is also special. It is uh, unique. It is something that maybe we don't see in our everyday lives so often. So some of the uh, symptoms or some of their reaction, for example, druta uh, chetasaha, melted heart. Well, what is a melted heart? So poetic. I mean, I was thinking, have I experienced my heart being melted? And you know, there's some, some memories, some thoughts come. But even if, you know, if we try to do so in a spiritual way by seeing the beautiful uh, decorations of Radhe Sham, Krishna Balaram, sometimes if you're lucky or if we're lucky, we get a feeling uh, of swelling in the heart, or or maybe uh, a parent who who sees their child and 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 their heart is so to say melting. And it's saying they're melting for him on the pot of attraction. Well, Krishna, as we know, means all attractive, and as mentioned, he is personally associating with these inhabitants of Hastinapur. So they, they are completely overwhelmed with love, overwhelmed with, uh, with, with these feelings, as, as Druta Chetas has, with a, with a melted heart. And if, if you're just reading along, actually, it, it seems that, because in the next verse, 
it, it mentions, I won't give away too much, but it mentions the female relatives, you know, who their, their eyes were flooded with tears and they were trying to hold their tears because they didn't, uh, they thought maybe crying while Krishna was leaving wasn't such a good omen or so auspicious. But actually, whose heart was melted? Sarve, all the hearts were melted. And two verses prior, we see that even great uh, warriors, as Yuyutsu, Kripacharya, Nakula, Sahadev, Bhima, Sena, Dhaumya, who is that Dhritarashtra, that they're all fainting. They're practically dying out of this separation or the idea of separation to Krishna. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite astonishing because, you know, Krishna hears a guest and he's leaving and, and their reaction is that they're fainting. Their heart is melting. You know, uh, nowadays, maybe, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I can't say generally, but if you have a guest for a few months, you know, a few months passes by and then you'll start counting the days maybe when, <laughs> when it's time for them to, to move on, <laughs> you know? But it's, it's the opposite. Krishna has been there for months and now he's leaving and there's this beautiful reciprocation that has been recorded and that we're able to experience through Bhagavatam. And some other, uh, some other reactions, animishai, was without twinkling of the eyes. That they're just wanting to drink the nectar of Krishna's beauty. They just want to uh, not even blink their eyes for a second and just continuously have their eyes drink the nectar of his beauty. This is a very advanced symptom to have. Uh, we also hear pastimes of the Vrijvasis, like when Balaram, when he came uh, back to Vrindavan alone, not with Krishna, but when he's updating all the inhabitants of Krishna's pastimes, the explanation is like that, that they were all sitting, pin drop silence, and their eyes not blinking for a moment. Just hearing, hearing and, and, and seeing the beautiful form of Balaram and being completely absorbed so these inhabitants of, Astin, of Hastinapur were completely absorbed. Or there's like that famous uh, verse where the gopis, they condemn the creator, Brahma, for creating eyelids because it stops them from seeing the Lord for a fraction of a second. I, I'll read the verse here. It's a beautiful directly from the gopi's mouths. When you go off to the forest during the day, a tiny fraction of a second becomes like a mil millennium for us because we cannot see you. And even when we can eagerly look upon your beautiful face, so lovely with this adorn adornment of curly locks, our pleasure is hindered by our eyelids, which were fashioned by the foolish creator. <laughs> And also, tatra tatra, here and there. Right, they were moving about hither and thither in perplexity. And I actually like a, uh, how Srila Prabhupada puts it. He says, loitering around, and, and he gives a lecture and he says, These Pandavas were so purified by association of Krishna, so they were thinking, how shall we live? If Krishna goes away to Dwarka, then how can we live? In this way, they could not make any solution. They were loitering here and there, 
Just like when you are disturbed in mind, you loiter what to do, what to do, what to do. So they were doing that. And actually, that's exactly when Krishna ended up leaving. That's exactly what they were doing. They were loitering around what to do, what to do. But what were they thinking? They were thinking how to bring Krishna back. It's, it's not this like passive relationship that uh, it, it just shows their, the importance of eagerness that even if it may be difficult to be able to get what you want, there is an eager attempt out of love. In the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, Narda Muni and Hanuman, they're having a beautiful conversation and Hanuman convinces Narda Muni that he isn't a great devotee and actually the, the devotees that he should go see are in Hastinapur, the Pandavas. So Narda Muni takes Hanuman's leave and he arrives in Hastinapur. And here's a beautiful description of what they were doing because Krishna recently just left and Narada Muni arrived. When Narada arrived dancing at the palace gate, the doorkeepers immediately informed kind Yudhisthira. The king and his family at once stood up to greet Narada, even though they had been busy deliberating on how to induce Krishna to come to Hastinapur. One idea had been to send Bhima or someone else to invite Krishna to an Aswamedha sacrifice. But the assembly thought this wouldn't make Krishna come soon enough because sacrifices take a long time to arrange. A second proposal was to ask Krishna to help defend Hastinapur from enemy attack. Even though there was no need for another sacrifice and no threat of attack on the city, the Pandavas were scheming to get Krishna's association by whatever means. In general, the Supreme Lord's devotees encounter two kinds of danger. One created by the Lord to proclaim His devotees' glories, and the other simulated by the Lord's devotees when they are intensely anxious to see Him. So we can see and we can learn from these great devotees that even though they have the mercy of being able to associate directly with Krishna, when he leaves, they're, they're thrown into pangs of separation. But not only that, then they're meditating how to bring him back. How to bring him back. And so, of course, you know, reading the reaction, reading the way these exalted personalities are acting in relation to Krishna. Sometimes we may think, well, you know, they're great devotees. But who am I? I'm a rascal. I, you know, I, I'm attached to worldly things. I can't control my senses. I'll never get there. But see, Srila Prabhupada, he's, he's giving us hope in this purport. Srila Prabhupada, he's letting us know that of course it's difficult to feel that when we're covered. But when there's a slight, how does he say it? Uh, once this relation is slightly revived, the conditioned soul at once becomes comes freed and then becomes mad after the association of the Lord. Like the Pandavas loitering around the, the inhabitants of Hastinapur. What to do? What to do? How can we find Krishna? How can we see Krishna? So how is this association made possible? Srila Prabhupada tells us not only by personal contact with the Lord but also by the association with his name, fame, form, and quality. So how do we get that association also? That is through our 
endeavor through the mercy of Krishna as well as we know in, in he tells Brahma Yavana Hamya Tabavo Yat Rupa Guna Karmakaha Tataiva Tatva Vigyana Mastute Mala Nugrahat. He tells him right uh Yavana Hamya Tabu Yat Rupa my form, my 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 qualities, my activities, everything let this be known to you, Anugrahat through my mercy. but also through the mercy of Krishna's devotees, because Krishna's acting through his devotees. So Srila Prabhupada, he's telling us here that the Srimad Bhagavatam, it, it, tra it trains the conditioned soul to this stage of perfection by submissive hearing from the pure devotee. And in in unveiling his lotus feet, I like the way uh, Burijan Prabhu, in, in a very short paragraph, how he explains this point. He says, thus, the Bhagavatam, the Bhagavatam helps one remember him, Krishna, whom one has forgotten. It awakens in one a longing, as well as teaches on the method to reestablish his relationship with God. When love for Krishna blossoms in one's heart, a moment apart from him will seem an eternity. And that is what of when Krishna, he visits Dwarka, and when he goes to visit Rukmini, Rukmini is, uh, of course, always waiting for Krishna, but when she gets news of his arrival, she becomes so ecstatic, she becomes so anxious to see him, that even though that her palace and her quarters are already clean and she has assistance to clean. She starts wanting to even clean it more and herself. She wants to clean herself so when Krishna comes, he comes to a very pleasant place. And when he's arriving, there's music playing and she receives him as he should be received with puja and starts washing Krishna's lotus feet. And she is so happy and so smiling, but then all of a sudden, what happens? Rukmini starts crying and tears start flowing from her eyes. And Krishna is perplexed. He gets such a warm welcome from his beloved queen. And then he arrives, and instead of being happy, her happiness turns to sorrow. Her smile turns to tears. So he asks her, you know, is there anything that I did? Was it when I was joking with you last time, did I offend you? What have I done? And so here Rukmini begins to teach Krishna something that he doesn't know. Rukmini tells Krishna that really you will only understand, you will only be able to understand if you can understand the heart of Srimati Radharani, of this Radha Bhav. You don't understand the love that the devotees have for you. So she starts 
she, she makes this comment and Krishna becomes amused of hearing something that he doesn't know. He is all-knowing. So and then he asks her to continue and then she, she continues on explaining to him the love of the devotees and how he doesn't understand. And it's interesting in this pastime at that time, Narda Muni, he's also, he comes to visit. And when Narda Muni comes, he's seeing this conversation, this, he sees the end of this conversation happening. But before he came, he was already meditating and um, a little bit anxious and perplexed because he was seeing the effects of Kali Yuga. He was seeing how so many people were covered that he felt that there was no hope that the people in Kali Yuga will remain irreligious, that there's no way that they will be saved from uh, material desires and that they will always be chasing material desires and no way that Krishna will be put in the center. So Narada Muni, uh, Krishna, he receives Narada Muni and he, he gives him the, the, the proper reception. But and then he notices that there is some type of disturbance in the mind of Narada Muni. And he's, he says, you know, this, this may be an inauspicious day. I come and my wife, she's sorrowful. My guru's disturbed, perplexed. Please explain to me. Well, first, the reason I was mentioning this pastime uh, is because Rukmini, one thing I forgot to mention is that when she's explaining to Krishna, she's telling him, just, to, just seeing you come, seeing you arrive, I already know that you're going to have to leave. And, and the separation starts with, his, with the union. The union is beginning and the separation is already starting. The, this is the heart of the great devotees that they love Krishna so much. Rukmini loves Krishna so much that even seeing him, she knows one day or a certain time he will, he will have to leave. And that creates these, these feelings of, of separation, of love that increase, increase within the heart. Well, since we started the pastime, we might as well finish it because the, the ending is, is uh, the, 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 the cream of the crop. So Krishna tells Narada Muni, he says, you know, Rukmini was also telling me this, and, and, and now, you know, your disturbance and your worry, but do not worry. And then he starts to explain, and he, Krishna actually gets so absorbed in his leela and his future, he starts to explain to Narada Muni uh, that he will come in Kali Yuga. He will, he will arrive in Navadvip. He will be the son of Sachimata. And then Krishna starts to explain his form of Goranga to Narada Muni. That he will be tall, and golden complexion, beautiful long arms, and while describing the form of Goranga, while being so absorbed in the form of Goranga, Lord Krishna unexpectedly manifests the Goranga form and gives darshan to Narada Muni. And Rukmini is also seen. And by seeing this form, Narada Muni immediately faints. 
And after he wakes, he awakes Krishna, tells him a little bit more about his purpose of, the, of Yuga Dharma Harinam Sankirtan. And then he tells him, he gives him permission, of, okay, go tell everyone. So then Narad Muni goes on his traveling to the different planets, different, uh, in, in even in spiritual worlds, in Kailash, and he starts telling them, Goranga is coming, Goranga is coming. And that everyone has to come to Kali Yuga at, at this specific time to partake in the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I was thinking, when I was reading this pastime, how well, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the, the, the Harinam Sankirtan, what he's given us, is the culmination of all scriptures. Because as the Srimad Bhagavatam, is a literary incarnation of the Lord. At some times it's present, at some times it's not. But we are so fortunate that it has appeared again during this time. And we're, we have the Srimad Bhagavatam, thanks to Srila Prabhupada. And it will be with us for the next 10,000 years during the Golden Age. And but why did it come now during this, this uh, Kali Yuga at this specific time when the Yuga Dharma is Harinam Sankirtan? Because the Srimad Bhagavatam, it 100% supports uh, the mood of Kirtan and also the understanding of Kirtan. In order to be able to share this Yuga Dharma, it is very important for us to associate with the Srimad Bhagavatam. And as Srila Prabhupada ends the purport, he says the Srimad Bhagavatam trains the conditioned soul to this stage of perfection by submissive hearing from the pure devotee. So if we make an effort, uh, you know, actually, one time I was conversing with Dayendra Prabhu and I didn't, you know, check, uh, scripturally check what, what he told me, but it always stood, I sorry, stayed in my mind. Uh, he was saying that the, the Srimad Bhagavatam is Srimati Radharani's mercy. So he was really encouraging me to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. He says, you want Srimati Radharani's mercy? You have to read the Bhagavatam. And he was preaching the importance uh, of sharing kirtan, but intertwined with a deep understanding of Bhagavatam. Because then your chanting has uh, more depth, more meaning, more power. Because it's coming from a place, uh, a deeper place, a place of knowledge. But knowledge of what? Knowledge of removing this veil of illusion so we can be a transparent via medium. So we can remove our false ego from getting in the way. And we can purely chant Shudhanam. We can purely chant the names and purely share the names. If we don't have the means to purify our heart, to be able to receive Shudhanam, then there is some, of course, some effect. There is, because the Holy Name is all-powerful. But it shines brighter if the recipient, if the devotee, is able to chant Shudhanam. Of course, getting there is a process, but that's why we submissively hear from the pure devotee and we associate. So I wanted to actually, uh, since this verse is about uh, 
hearts melting on the pot of attraction, of being attracted to Krishna. You know, maybe it's easier for them or in the sense that they have Krishna with them. Uh, we, we have been passed down this knowledge. We're able to associate with devotees who are probably experiencing Krishna consciousness and on a deeper level. But it is important for us also to, to gather and to cultivate these experiences in Krishna consciousness. Understand why, is, why are we attracted to this, to ISKCON, or to this society, to this Krishna conscious movement. Why are we attracted to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, to Srila Prabhupada's mission? So I actually wanted to uh, bring the, the next portion of, of today's lecture to the floor where we can hear different devotees' realizations or maybe just answering the simple question of what is it that attracts you to Krishna? So is, is there a microphone available? And then we can have a little reflective meditation Anybody would like to start? You start. Madhumati, start. Um, before I uh, respond to your question, I was thinking, sitting down and hearing your realizations, such um, deep and sweet realizations. Uh, you have grown up in Krishna consciousness and uh, I had a request that please request there's so many young And uh, I think it is, for me, it's his devotees. And, and you're surrounded with his devotees, everything else comes around mm. of Krishna. So for me, it's, it's Krishna's devotees, yeah. <laughs> because Krishna's devotees bring the holy name, they bring the pastimes, you know, they bring everything. If I had to practice Krishna consciousness, like chanting Hare Krishna on my own, or reading the Bhagavatam on my own, or sit down taking prashaw on my own I have to be honest it, Krishna will, I won't find Krishna so attractive um, but when I'm around with his devotees then so yeah for me it's his devotees wow it's a beautiful realization <laughs> and there's so many wonderful devotees in Brihad you know Brihad Bhagavatam Rita Narada Muni is going through the whole finding the devotees and of course there's the peers or our seniors here who are, and then there's you know, actually in Srila Prabhupada, in the beginning of a purport, he says, here he says, um, he is the chief eternal amongst all eternals. So I was thinking, okay, the eternals, as there's, of course, Krishna's expansions, his avatars, and then there's the devotees that are eternally with him. Of course, we're all eternally, eternal, but they're consciously eternal in, in their in their sarup, in their, under, in their relationship with Krishna. And um, these are amazing souls who are eternally with Krishna. But then Krishna, uh, of course, Prabhupada is, is establishing Krishna's position that he alone is the maintainer of the many eternals, uh, as he says. So it's, it's wonderful how, how there, there, that there's... I guess you could say so many different types of devotees and different categories in, in this world, in other worlds, in other planets, in the spiritual worlds, and, and we get glimpses 
of them throughout the Bhagavatam, and that's why it's, it's a, such an amazing literature because we see from different yugas, we see from different lokas. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, we were just reading the Brihad Bhagavatamita, and it was interesting to understand the aspect that there's a variety of devotees, like you were saying, in all different planets. And in Vaikuntha, I mean, Gopakumar is there, and he, like some Vaikuntha was saying, what are you chanting, O oh Krishna Gopal? We, we don't chant like that. This is just not right, you know. <laughs> chant the mantras that we chant here, proper, proper mantras, you know, do it properly. <laughs> and then the other Vaikuntha was, he says, no, it's, it's totally fine for him to, him to chant like this because it, it's, all, it's all the same, you know. Uh, and so like, you see that even in Vaikuntha, it's like such variety of devotees there are. And so, yeah, you, start, you see a lot of variety of devotees around here. <laughs> a lot of variety of devotees are over there, everywhere. But devotees are, are, are all sweet. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you like to share? Yeah, it's, it's Actually, I was going to say devotees also. <laughs> That's the thing. When, I, when you asked ask that question, the thing I was thinking of was like, I think what attracts me the most is Krishna's devotees. And mm -hmm. it's just the love that you get from the devotees. They Just the kindness. And you don't experience that with other people. Like, it's just not there. And the love, the kindness, the support, yeah, it's what's most attractive to me. Yeah. I mean, the fire is beautiful, but with the sparks decorating the fire, it's, it's also beautiful. <laughs> I'm sorry for my English. <laughs> I am... Uh, aspiring devotee by Kripa Prabhupada Kripa and what uh, bring me to Krishna is uh, Prabhupada and um, he catch my heart and my soul just uh, mm. yeah I should Prabhupada ki yeah anyone would have liked to share some realization Hare <laughs> well. Um, <clears throat> I would say there's so many things, as Mother Mimaji said, that attracts Krishna. And for me, at different times in my life, in this life, it's been different things. Um, but as time has gone on, the thing I've realized the most is that <clears throat> we're attracted to Krishna because there's nothing else in the universe to be attracted to. He is the supreme attractive being. He's our ultimate shelter. And when we go back home, when we go back to Krishna, as we <clears throat> obtain more realization in this life, we lose attraction for everything else. Nothing else matters. And as every day goes on and on, more and more I realize nothing is going to give you satisfaction, love, and happiness other than Krishna and definitely by extension all his devotees. Mm. So beautiful. <laughs> I was, uh, I mean, devotees have been said it's the most humble and brilliant way to describe Krishna's beauty because we see it through them. But I think what's most amazing for me or what reminds me of Krishna all the time, or some of the time, is his brilliance. And so seeing uh, a devotee do something that is like so skillful or so humble or such a quality that just touches your heart, that reminds me of Krishna. Mm. And then, I mean, it's just such a beautiful creation when you look at this material world, how it, 
it's like two worlds in one, right? There's a spiritual component and there's a material component. And they're both Krishna, but they're working simultaneously. Mm. But it's there only for our benefit. It, mm. it's, it's, like, it's difficult to comprehend how precise Krishna makes this world and creates an experience for us personally to be reformed. Mm. It's incredible. Yeah, it's like this simplicity in this per perplexity. So it's so simple, but there's all of these things going on that maybe we don't comprehend. And where we see that Krishna, he's, it's, it's a perfect, you know, it's a perfect arrangement. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yeah, why, 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 what attracts you to Krishna? What attracts you to Krishna? Well, say one or more. <laughs> But we need the mic in your mouth so that the devotees can hear also. His somewhere. beauty. His beauty. Unlimited. Uh, his red uh, ruby uh, necklace. Mm -hmm. And his white pearl, his pearl necklace. Mm -hmm. And his flute. Mm -hmm. And his red mm -hmm. toenails and fingernails like rubies. And... His um, his shark earrings. And can you imagine shark earrings? And um, <laughs> I can't think of anything better. So no, these descriptions of Krishna were how, which actually was was one of my appreciations and my attraction to Krishna is. I mean, how are we getting all these descriptions? We're getting these descriptions through shastra. So I mean, my, myself. I mean, I love kirtan. I you know I love to do kirtan with the devotees. But really, the you know the Srimad Bhagavatam and the scriptures that we have that allow us to really meditate on a daily basis or or get absorbed in this world of Krishna. Now, it's you know this the scriptures the Srimad Bhagavatam is so attractive. So attractive. Ask me another question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you answered it. I think you answered it. I wasn't done. <laughs> okay, keep on going. No, I'm done. What else do you love of Krishna? What else do you love of Krishna? What attracts you? <laughs> peacock feather. Did you ever look at a peacock feather closely? Yes. It has the colors in it. And the shine and the gold and the blue and the green and the and the black and, and it's so like you actually become hypnotized if you look at a peacock feather. Well, in relation to Krishna, because I know that he made that, or that and he wears his, it, that he wears it on his head, and that the peacock is his dancing guru. So, if you've ever, like, did you ever see in Vrindavan? Did you ever see a peacock spread its uh, spread its uh, feathers? Mm -hmm. They spread and shake them. You become uh, hypnotized for a long time. Uh, <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, mystical. Thank you. Was Vishnu Das? Was his your name, Prabhu? Yeah. Vishnu Das. What, what I love about. Um, what what's it, what attracts you to Krishna? What what is attracting you to? Uh, well, initially books and uh, reading from Prabhupada, Prabhupada, and uh, when visiting the temples, people are so welcoming. There is always an atmosphere of joy. And it doesn't matter what somebody brings in, because the the so many people are chanting mantra and are and are have their minds 
fixed on Krishna that anything anybody brings in gets pushed out if, it, if it's unwholesome, if mm -hmm. there's unwholesomeness. And if there is some unwholesomeness which goes in, which finds the way into the, the temple or the ashram, we hear it and then we, we let it go and then everything's fine again. Mm -hmm. And we just continue practicing. And so it's kind of nice to think of the ashram or the temple as like, there, there's a presence there which is, which is not expendable, right? There's something like eternal where if we just keep chanting eventually, we'll purify everything. Mm -hmm. And so those, those moments where we have uh, quiet mind or mantra or even silence and can really see the ashram and, and, and the peace and the, and the crispness and the beauty mm -hmm. are all things I love about uh, Krishna and his gifts to us. And, he, and, he, and also Krishna is and Radha are, are beautiful mm. and I appreciate when I see Krishna with Radha I can think oh it's like parent and so I appreciate that aspect and when I see Krishna alone then I see I think oh, okay he's like my my older brother I <laughs> have an older brother but yeah, yeah so oh that's beautiful thank you so much thank you anyone would like to share Prangovinda yeah, Prabhu? No, I, I said, I said, I mentioned Srimad Bhagavatam, the scriptures. <laughs> I was thinking <clears throat> about uh, how to put it into word. Because the moment uh, I went to Mayapur, early age, I was a teenager, young boy. I ran away from my home. <clears throat> and the attraction was that the neighbor explain about the atmosphere of the devotees. I had no idea about that time, Ishkan or Krishna consciousness. Just the devotee chanting, dancing, peaceful, very, uh, all, I would say, alternative sense gratification at that time in my, you know, and now I reflect and examine, was a much better than where I was with my brother. So, Obviously, that was the first key point that I went there. Then sometimes, you know, uh, in, in our life we see that some people make things happen, some people watch things happen, some people wonder what happened. I mean, that's happened in my life, like I was reflecting in different parts. I wanted to enjoy life and I wanted to have it like a complete and I found that when I re reflect many pastimes of Prabhupada and those are very catchy like it never leaves me I, I love that mm -hmm. Prabhupada says what you are attracted to join the Prabhu he said I like women and flower I could relate that and he said Try to see the source of that attraction and then you'll come to Krishna. Mm. And I deeply think of all those attractions that I had and I found that actually this has a completeness in Krishna. So I have to try my uh, best to come to him with that. But then as I am progressing, progressing by the association of devotees, by the mercy of the sadhan bhakti, I would say, may, that I find that actually chanting and pleasing Prabhupada and Krishna actually automatically satisfy me. So I want to go in a full speed to just... Now my attraction is for that. Hmm. That some or other get the mercy of Prabhupada and Krishna. There you go. And that attraction, uh, I deeply like... A, one in any way. I'll, I hopefully never give up. But I also have a fear Krishna can put illusion and I may forget. So I pray also for that, that please, 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 my Lord. We also pray that you continue to be fully absorbed as you've been. So that uh, I hope that we may have our hearts melting on the path of attraction that we can look at Krishna 
uh, without blinking eyes and that we can move hither and thither in perplexity in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Haribo, Shri Prabhupada, the key. Yeah.